welcome to this video. This is the first time I'm chatting with you because in case you haven't guessed it already, this is a knitting vlog. I haven't done a vlog since Vlogmas and I really felt like doing a vlog episode for one of the knits that I'm making for my wedding and I thought what better pattern than the cardigan that I'm going to knit for my wedding. I am wearing my only other hand knit cardigan which is the Edith cardigan by Pam Allen for Quince & Co. I really love how comfy cozy this cardigan is. It's a nice long open style one with great big pockets and I knit it in um drops air, which is super light and fluffy, and it's one of my favorite things to wear. I am not sitting in my normal seat because as you can see, somebody else is, and I couldn't bear to disturb Klondike. She's our girl, and she loves to sleep on the vintage chair, so I thought I would just sit next to the vintage chair today. <laughs> I wanted to give you the first little peek at my Romance Cardigan by Trico Designs MCL. Um, the designer is Marie-Christine Levesque, um, so that's why her design name is uh, Trico Designs MCL, as she is also French. She is from New Brunswick, so that is why most of her patterns are in French. Her whole website is in French, but the patterns are available in English on Ravelry. So that's where I got my copy of the pattern. I don't have much so far. This is the start of the cardigan. <laughs> um, it starts with the back and then you pick up stitches and knit the front. So it's kind of a drop shoulder style. And this is actually going to be my very first drop shoulder pattern. And I'm really loving the construction so far. Of course, I am loving using the Drops Brushed Alpaca. It is so incredibly soft. And once it's knit up, you can tell it might be airy, but it is not see-through. It does have just like a gossamer feel to it, which is exactly the vibe that I was going for for my wedding cardigan. So I'm very, very excited about how it's knitting up so far. And I will check back in with you when I have a little bit more done. I'll see you soon.
everyone i am back again i am at work and no one else is here right now so i can give you a little update on my wedding cardigan um sorry about the light this is the only window i have so it looks like half of my face is in light the other half is in dark but there is light <laughs> um anyway i have reached the point where my cardigan is officially all in one piece so the way the cardigan is designed is that you start with the back piece and then you knit it down until the bottom of the armpit and then you pick up one of the front pieces, knit it to the same length, and then you knit the second front piece to the same length. And once they're all the same, you can then join them in the round, but you know, you're still knitting flax, it's a cardigan, uh, but they're all one piece then. And I have reached that point. So I'm gonna give you a little look-see. Oh, had a ball yarn, it just fell. It's okay, I'll just pick it up later. But it's actually starting to look like a garment. So here it is. I've only just done about an inch and a half of the underarm section. So really not all that much to show you. And I'm not gonna try it on because my cord isn't long enough and I really don't want to accidentally push my stitches off of the end. I really, really, really do not like having to either frog or try and pick up the stitches in this brushed alpaca yarn because it's not easy. Um, I did have to do that with the one of the front pieces because I forgot to do um, some compound increases. So compound increase is when certain sizes, like the size that I'm knitting, um, need more stitches at a faster rate than a smaller size. So for example, instead of increasing one stitch on each row, you're increasing two stitches on each row. Or instead of increasing every second row, you're increasing every row. So I had forgotten to do some of those. I had to go back and redo them. Um, and I painstakingly like undid stitch by stitch. And every time I got to the end, I had to snip little fibers that had just gotten like so tightly woven together there was no way of getting them apart. So I did have to do that once, kind of annoying, and I made a tiny mistake on one of my front pieces. I increased on the correct row but in the wrong place because, let me get a little closer, it's a v-neck until a certain point and then it just goes straight down. And is it on this side or the other side? I think it's on the other side. Instead of putting my increase over here on the underarm side, I put it on the front. So I have this nice V. Oh yeah, there it is. And then right here, this little spot, I put my increase on this side instead of this side. So it's absolutely not at all noticeable. It's, I only know I did it because I'm looking for it. Nobody else will ever see that, it's just me. But uh, it kind of goes with my sort of, this is my ideology when it comes to knitting, is that mistakes are always going to be made, but I like to make one tiny mistake somewhere at the beginning that will be a talisman against future large mistakes, such as ones that require you to undo your whole project or change it up completely, something like that. Anyway, luckily it was a tiny mistake. I barely notice it. I only notice it if I'm looking for it, but there's my talisman little tiny mistake. But that'd give you a little update on how it's looking. So that's the back. It is just so soft and fluffy and cozy. Oh my gosh, it's like a cloud. Like, I, I'm just gonna use this as a pillow now. Uh, it's just so lovely. Anyway, back to some knitting and I'll catch up with you a little later. Bye.
everyone i am back with another update on my sweater i have changed up what i am working on with the sweater and that's because i'm starting to get a little bored of the body of the sweater which happens to me a lot so usually when i do a top down sweater i do the yoke and then once i split for the body and the sleeves i will just knit the body until I run out of my current ball of yarn. Sorry for the honking. <laughs> I'll knit till I run out of my current ball of yarn and then I will stop working on the body and pick up for a sleeve and then I'll do both sleeves and then come back to the body because somehow that actually spurs me on to finish the body. I know most people have a problem with sleeve island. I have a problem with body island. <laughs> So I uh, finished up the skein of yarn that I was working on for the body and I started my first sleeve. And it looks a little wonky when I show it to you because I have it on my try on cord so that I can put it on and show you. But first I wanted to show you what that sleeve looks like. So I am super stoked about how this cardigan is designed. This is gonna look a little weird when I put this on because I kind of have to put it on like a pullover when it's a cardigan, but it's because I have a cord and I don't want to lose any stitches and I'm being careful. But this is my first time trying it on after adding a sleeve. And oh, it looks so good. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. So I am super stoked about the way that this pattern is designed. That's just stuck on the cord there. Um, I absolutely love how this cardigan is designed. There's so many little details to the shaping and the fit that just make this amazing. And I'm super, super excited about the way that it's made. So you'll notice that if I lift my arm up, I have a full sleeve on the top, but I'm still at the join. And that's because this entire sleeve cap is done using short rows. And oh my gosh, how have I never thought about how that would affect the look of a garment before? I never did. But when we knit sleeves, typically we just pick up our stitches and go and knit the tube. But this sweater very much is like a set in sleeve type of sweater. Um, I mistakenly called it in my first My Knitted Wedding series video, a drop shoulder design. This is not a drop shoulder design at all. This is a set in sleeve design. And I just think this is brilliant because instead of just knitting a straight tube that would create a t-shape that would then have too much bulk under the armpit and the sleeve would not be even on the bottom and the top it would be shorter on the top and longer on the bottom because you'd be knitting straight out but when you put your arm down it would just kind of hike it up type thing oh my gosh this was so 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 smart and it just creates this beautiful shaped sleeve head so these are the balloon style sleeves there's two sleeve options for this pattern there's just the plain tapered sleeve and the balloon sleeve i've chosen to go with the balloon sleeve which you can't really tell so far you won't really notice till i get down to the cuff of the sleeve and i still have quite a ways to go but i am just wanting to share this little update because i'm so excited about this sleeve fit and how beautiful it looks and how beautiful it feels it's i'm repeating myself because i just keep saying the same thing but it's so soft and it's so nice and i love it so much and i'm so excited about this project <laughs> anyway back to knitting and I will catch up with you when I have a little more done. Bye.
You excited? Yeah.
day after Doyle and I took a trip to the valley, which will have been the footage that I just showed you. There goes Rue walking away. <laughs> uh, I'm just fresh out of the shower, so I've got wet hair and everything, but I wanted to show you a couple of things that we got from the market slash a store in Wolfville and to give you an update on my sweater. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you are the flowers that I got. And these are very special flowers because these flowers are from the people who are doing our wedding flowers. They are a small company, not even company, it's a husband and wife team that run a flower business based out of the valley and I chose to go with them for my flowers because one of my friends used them for her flowers back in 2021 and her flowers were stunning. I absolutely loved them and I love that they have sort of this almost wildflower vibe to them. Like some of them are obviously cultivated flowers, like peonies aren't really wild flowers. Um, but I absolutely love how incredible their bouquets are and how they combine so many colors and types of flowers like everything is just an explosion of color and they always make their bouquets very um scented so when my friend got married some of the pieces of greenery in her bouquet were actually herbs so her bouquet smelled gorgeous as did all the little table flowers and I know this because it was our job to move them from the ceremony location to the reception location and our car just smelled so good. It was amazing. Um, having these right by my nose smells incredible too. And I, I wanted to like kind of stop by and grab some of their spring flowers because their spring flowers are just absolutely gorgeous. I've been watching them on their social media. Um, but also I wanted to introduce myself. So it was kind of fun to be like, to come up to their stall and be like, hi, I'm one of your October brides. And, and it was really nice. And I got some flowers to take home and we bought some for Doyle's mom because it was her birthday yesterday. So we picked up a little jar of flowers for her and took that to her yesterday and she loved them. They were so nice. So that was the first thing that I bought. That was from the market. The next thing that I'm gonna show you was not from the market, but I could not resist this. I had to have it. It's a new mug. <laughs> it says, ew, David. <laughs> I just love this mug so much. 
much. It's just, it combines so many of my favorite things. Um, and you know, I just thought it was hilarious. Like so, this is such a good pun. I love puns. I love punny jokes. Like I, I like dad jokes and stuff like that. Like that's my preferred style of humor. Um, as well as like British humor because British humor actually is funny. I like a lot of North American humor, which is just stupid funny. Um, but anyway, yeah, I thought it was so cute. I had to have it. So I now have a new mug for the collection and our collection is getting quite big. I don't know where we're going to find room. We need to do a bit of a, a bit of a sort and see which ones we actually still really like using and want to keep around and which ones we're like, eh, we don't really use that so much anymore. I guess I could go to a new home. So cheers with my new mug. Anyway, I thought I would also give you a little update on my sweater because I actually have made some very good progress. Um, the last time I showed it to you, I had part of a sleeve done and that, that was the last time I was chatting with you. And I did also do um, a little clip of a try on of seeing the length of the, of the sweater, the sort of sleeve rather. Anyway, I have a bit more done now. So progress so far, I think I have finished the length that I need for the sleeve. For the first sleeve that is, which is this. It looks crazy because this is the, um, the puffy sleeve or the balloon sleeve, I think is what it's called in the pattern. Um, so it looks really, really big, but it's because you do a, a decrease row and it cinches it all down. So you have like this nice puffy sleeve. So um, I also have started picking up stitches for the other sleeve. I started that last night, but I was just too tired. I couldn't finish it. So let me put this on and show you what it looks like so far. So. Here we are so far, and if I just sort of pull my cords together to mimic the decrease row, here is sleeve number one. And it's probably where it needs to be. I, I'm not entirely sure. I don't feel ready to commit and do the decrease row, because um, like I mentioned in one of my previous um, try-ons, this stuff is very, very difficult to frog um, because it sticks to itself like Velcro. And I am not entirely sure that this is the length that I want. Um, first of all, I think the lengths written in the pattern are a little too long. Um, so this right now is 15 and a half inches. And for my size, it told me to do 17 and a half inches. And I think that would just be far too long because that would be 17 and a half inches plus another two inches of ribbing for the sleeve. And I think that would be too long for me. Um, I do think I need a little bit more, like maybe just a half an inch because I am uh, deviating from the pattern a bit. I don't want to do the ribbed cuffs. I want to do an I-cord cuff, um, mainly because I just really, really liked it on my Augustine's sweater dress that I did a few years ago. And I just think it looks really romantic and very um, delicate and fancy. And I just, I want that look for this cardigan. So I'm doing that slight modification from the pattern. Um, and I want to make sure that, first of all, it's not gonna be too short so that when I go to lift my arm up, my sleeve like comes up here which was the big problem I had with my Augustine's sweater dress sleeves. Um, but also I don't want it too long because then the puffiness of the sleeve will sort of like fold over the I-cord cuff. And I don't want that either because then it's just gonna look like it's too long and it's too big and I don't want that look either. So I'm pretty sure I need to do maybe another half an inch, but what I'm doing right now is instead of making a decision right now, I am putting it aside until I can knit the second sleeve because I also wanna make sure that it's it's not gonna be like tugging it in it because you know right now I only have a sleeve on one side, therefore I only have the weight on one side. I don't want that to sort of like skew how the sweater is sitting on my body and give me a false 
idea of the sleeve length. So I thought I'll just put this one on barber cords, easy peasy, and start knitting the second sleeve, get the second sleeve done to the same length, then try it on, then see, okay, how does each sleeve fit? So that's my plan of attack right now. Um, I have already <laughs> started picking up. There's my cord right there. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I have to finish picking that up and then getting the second sleeve done. But I am feeling very positive about how this is going. I sort of have a uh, unofficial deadline, if you will. I'd like to have this done by the end of July. And I feel pretty confident that I could do that um, because I just have the other sleeve to do and then maybe four inches on the body. I think that's about what I want. I don't want it to be too, too long because I'm wearing it with a big full dress and I don't want the cardigan to be longer than the waist of the dress. So I would like to finish it by the end of July because I'm taking my dress to get altered in early August. So I won't have it with me to try on the length of the cardigan anymore. So. That's why I would like to finish this cardigan by the end of July. If I find maybe like halfway into July, I'm still not done the first, the second sleeve, I'm going to pause that, go back to the body, make sure I can get the body knitted to a length that I like in time to try it on with my dress before I take it to the tailors. So things are moving. Wedding's coming up quick. <laughs> it's a little scary because there's still some planning to do. Um, but I think it'll all go off very well. And I think my sweater is going to be absolutely perfect. I also have another little update to share about the cardigan. So the finisher on the neckline and the button band of this cardigan, there is a rib button band, but there's also a crocheted edging on top of that uh, rib button band which is like the very last thing that you do to finish off this pattern. And it's probably the main reason why I love this pattern is because I just love that little detail. I was going to try and do it myself because I do not crochet other than a single chain in order to do a provisional cast on. But I was actually chatting with my maid of honor, my best friend, and I it had slipped my mind. She's learning how to crochet right now. So we have decided that I will do all the knitting of the cardigans and then she's going to crochet the little edging along the button band. So oh, I'm, I'm just so excited about that. First of all, because it means that I don't have to do the crocheting, <laughs> but also because it's going to be a joint project that we will have made for each other. And I just, I love how sweet that is and how special it's going to make these sweaters. They're already very, very special, but it's just going to make them that little extra tiny bit special. And I'm very, very excited about that. So I better get back to knitting now because I need to get a whole other sleeve knitted. <laughs> so I'll talk to you soon. Bye.
shirt thing. Wait, they're not all lit. <laughs> oh, this will be in the outtakes <laughs> of the video. Oh, this, I told you. Oh, well, the winds. The winds are not on your side. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pat. Happy birthday to you. Oh. Many more. <laughs> many more. Throw them up before the wind does it for you. Okay. Just don't Woo! Just on this hot and sunny summer day. I apologize if there's any background noise because I'm outside, I'm not wearing a mic, but I wanted to give you an update on my sleeves. I am so, so happy with these sleeves. They are both the same length. I kept the first one the length that it already was and I knitted the second one to match that. And now that they're both fully done, I can tell they are the absolute perfect length that I wanted for my wedding cardigan. And I'm now going to do the decrease row and then do my I-cord cuffs. Um, like I mentioned, I am modifying the pattern to not have the ribbed cuffs. I'm just doing little I-cord cuffs because that's the look that I wanted with this particular cardigan for my wedding. I also did a sneaky little try on when I was at my parents' house the other night to see how my cardigan looks so far with my wedding dress and it looks beautiful. I'm so happy with it. The color matches perfectly. I love the style over my dress um, and my mom helped me measure how much more of the body that I need to knit to get the length that I want to hit where I wanted to hit on the dress and it's not that much more so I'm pretty sure that I can do it in the rest of July. Won't be doing it today because they're having friends over for a barbecue, but this morning I did manage to finish the sleeves and I just need to do the cuffs and then they will be completely done and I can move on and go back to the body and have this cardigan done in no time. Super, super happy with it. And hopefully I'll get it done by the end of July, which is my plan. And then um, starting either end of July or beginning of August, I can start working on my best friend's version for her, her look for the wedding. So. Anyway, I thought I would give you this lovely little update. It's nice and breezy now, so it doesn't feel super hot anymore, but do not recommend trying on brushed alpaca in the summertime, <laughs> particularly not at your parents' house if they don't have AC. It was really hot and sweaty. But anyway, <laughs> let's give you one more look of the cardigan. Also, can I just say how impressed I am with this adorable little braided hairdo that I did. That was the weirdest turnaround because I'm kind of like kneeling down, but I'm super happy with my hair today. 
and I need everything to be nice and cool because it's gonna be a hot day. Okay, I'll talk to you soon, bye.
And with that, my romance cardigan is done. Well, not technically 100% done because it still needs the crocheted edging along the button band, but my maid of honor slash best friend is doing that. And I really wanted to get this video out now. I didn't want to wait until she does the edging because we've decided that she's going to wait until I've done both of the cardigans before she does the crocheted edging and she'll work on both at the same time. And I still have a ways to go on hers. I'm quite far into it, maybe about 40%, but I wanted to get this video out now, so I thought I'll just give you sort of like a dry run final reveal of this cardigan. And then of course, after my wedding, I'm going to be sharing photos of the cardigan with the crochet edging, and of course, the cardigan on my wedding dress. Now, of course, I am not showing you the cardigan over my wedding dress because my wedding is still a few months away. Um, and I thought I would just put together a cute little outfit sort of showing the same color as my wedding dress so that you can really see how nicely it goes with the cardigan. And I just put a little camisole on underneath. I am super, super happy with this cardigan. I'm going to go into more detail on this when I finish my best friend's version as well. And then I'm going to do a podcast episode about both of the cardigans because I want to talk about um, knitting both sizes and see if I have any thoughts regarding that. Um, but of course I'm only part way into my best friend's version, so I don't have all of my thoughts formulated yet, so I'll have that done. I'll have those thoughts when I finish that cardigan. But I just wanted to sort of wrap up this vlog. I know it's been a long one, it's probably over an hour at this point, but I had so much to share, and really this is covering a period of about two and a half months, and I really, really love it because you see the progression of spring to summer in Nova Scotia, and I've shown some really beautiful clips. Honestly, I really love watching this footage, and I kind of feel like this vlog is more for me than it is for anybody else because it's also sort of... Um, covering a special point in my life where I'm prepping for my wedding and you know this is something I'm never gonna do again and I really loved being able to record these moments and put them together so that I can watch them in the future and remember this very special time in my life. Anyway I am going to sign off for now. I've got some beautiful reveal footage I'm gonna put at the end of the video and show you how this cardigan looks now that it is all done. I've done my buttons, I've woven in my ends, everything is properly finished. So once again, big thank you for sticking it out and watching this whole vlog. I really hope you enjoyed it. This is the fourth video in my Knitted Wedding series, and if you want to find out when the next one is gonna be available to watch, Click the subscribe button down below and ring the bell icon to be notified when my new videos come out. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. While you're here, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. I mainly do podcasts and pattern roundups, but of course there are special videos like this very one you're watching. I hope you all take care and happy knitting. Mm -hmm.